welcome to the AEW Dynamite Review. We are the Dadly Boys of What Culture. I'm Adam Wilborn, joined by Michael Hamlet and Michael Sidgwick here to review everything that happened on last night's episode of AEW Dynamite. But before we get into it, if you're a fan of this sort of thing, make sure you subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. <sighs> where we do daily wrestling podcasts where we not only review AEW Dynamite, but also AEW Collision, Raw, SmackDown, the show formerly known as NXT 2.0. Oh! Pay-per-views, premium live events. We have interviews, roundtable discussions, and a round of the week complete with a bloody good quiz, of course, on WrestleCulture. As I said, though, joined by Hamlet and Sidgwick to review last night's Dynamite. Sidge, what did you make of the show? I thought the show uh, boasted quite a few really, 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 really good moments. Um, I'm sorry, but that atmosphere and that backdrop just meant it was always on the cusp of being great. And there was some stuff that I deemed clever or well thought out that just didn't seem to really grab that audience. And like, I know people get tired of hearing it and I know people want it to be hot when it just isn't. Mm -hmm. And I know that it, it has reached a point, right? When I'm looking at, if you look at the various complaints that AEW has done a really good job of actually trying to resolve, answer, improve upon whatever. Like, it's not perfect, but if you just look right, there's a proper build to Wembley. Check. <laughs> there are big names going against each other with clean finishes, bold finishes, yeah. matches that aren't stunningly predictable on the Dynamite flagship TV show. Check. <laughs> right. There are quite a few improvements across the board. Uh, no ridiculous misadventures into sports entertainment. Check. It is reaching a point now, right, where it's like, what more do they have to do? They kind of deserve to get a bit of a better attendance or whatever. Maybe they just need a few more months of it. I was going to say, it's just about maintaining that now. Maybe. I, just, I was watching it last night. I'm thinking, come on. Come on. Where's the walk up here? I mean, they're, they're giving you a hangman derby. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it was that conundrum dynamite where, you know, when our broad philosophy, I don't want to put words in his mouth, um, but is really there's no such thing as a terrible crowd. And I used to, I think it stems from WWE being really bad for years, you know, before Papa Rage and all the rest of it. <laughs> where I was like, oh, crap crowd tonight. It's like, it's the worst show of all time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do you expect in like 2019? Yeah, a terrible crowd. Is it? Is it just the worst thing you've ever seen in your goddamn life? Zora World. Well, it's 50 Super Zora World a year. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So I, I do generally subscribe to the idea that there are no really bad crowds. There's probably like, you know, outliers and such. They need something to really sort of like get onto. But was that conundrum where it's like, was this just a bad crowd in like 2,800 and a 15,000 and it's always going to have an effect? I'm sorry, it just is. Or was it, there were certain matches on this show where while I thought were good, I had a great expectation for hmm. <laughs> Dickens Jones over here. <laughs> uh, but you know what I mean? Um, I, I still think there was some stuff on here that was, very, very, very good, and I look forward to putting it over. Yeah, really easy watch this. I enjoyed all, enjoyed all of it, and and the fact that you knew where we were heading by the end of the night as well really, really topped it off for me. Easy watch, I think, is nailed on my experience. AEW feels in a good place creatively yeah. without much. Um, I don't like. That's maybe I was going to say not much like popping off, but I don't even think that's fair. It's just that on a night where you do get a quieter crowd, it, it kind of feels like nothing's popping off. But on another night, I think some of the stuff on the show goes down better. Um, yeah, it's just in a good place creatively. The directions feel logical and you're always, I said this at the start of the year, you could feel the directional shift following the Continental Classic and it was so important yeah. that they just held the wheel, but you were never going to like magically overnight return to everybody's favourite version of AEW. And it feels like we're probably exactly where we should be. Like, there's no point where AEW's veered off towards insanity in 2024, but it just, it's oh, some, yeah, I don't know, maybe, there's probably, there's probably things I'm forgetting about there, but as a, yeah. One big thing, I think, if you missed as, as a wider creative yeah. vision, I think you felt pretty good about AEW in 2024. I just, I, it feels like all, it's, it is WWE in this respect. It feels like a lot of big, exciting stuff's going to happen at Wembley. Yeah. Like they're pointing towards and before Wembley, and after. <laughs> Wembley being this enormous destination where like there's gonna be huge payoffs. Yeah. And if they're not gonna be huge payoffs, you can probably expect a few more at all out or at Wrestle Dream. And in the meantime Grand you, Slam. Yeah, yeah. Grand, you just have to go through these like kind of regular dynamites get into the big events. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, well, let's get straight into it then, um, because uh, the show opened with the American champion. And God bless the United States. Not endorsing, just sounds funny. Just, just funny. Just um, funny. Um, MJF comes out to the ring uh, with a lovely jacket on. I, yeah, that's... Loved it on Tuesday, liked it on Wednesday. Greatness echoes greatness. Um, he mo- He's mocks- not going to watch that trash, though, is he? Apparently he did. Inspired by Tank Ledger. I assume... He does know... I, probably, assume he, I doubt he knows who Tank Ledger is. <laughs> uh, any listeners out there, viewers, YouTube... Who's Tank Ledger? And just on a pulse card. <laughs> just asking questions. Nicholas doesn't know. He produces the show. <laughs> yeah. You know the word that follows Hank and when Wilborn speaks on NXT? Tank. That's Tank Ledger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so MJF mocks the crowd, the trailer park capital of the world, South Carolina. Uh, keep your meth-addicted mouth shut. Uh, he talks about defeating the Redcoat terrorist Will Ospreay with ease, bringing gold back to this great nation. Not but like not here, but not here, basically. Uh, and he says he's going to be a one-man militia defeating Ospreay again in London. Uh, and he wants decorum from this crowd's and them to rise for their American hero. Before that can happen, though, Will Ospreay interrupts, runs down, MJF just bails, of course. Uh, and Ospreay, a good runner. Mm. And then, Gets it, doesn't he? Like, yeah. uh, <laughs> just, just, like, runs as fast as he possibly can. Remember how far... Like the sat of Yoshino out there. Like how far into the crowd he got when Punk chased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, like, yeah, he's yeah, up yeah. in the goth. <laughs> How'd you get there? Yeah, and then on the verge of signing another great runner, of course, if that photo is to be believed. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the Braun Strowman running away from Braun Strowman from Shane b- 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 Braun. <laughs> j- 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 Jericho. I'm going to team up. Yeah. <laughs> like the Survivor Series 2016 law. Stop fucking hitting me, shit. <laughs> I'll kick you, I'll <laughs> kick kick you your ass. <laughs> it was his like, ease up or something. Ease up, you little bitch. <laughs> Best thing he's ever done. Yeah, Jericho. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Roman, get in here. I'll spare the bitch for real. Yeah. <laughs> A drop kick right to the mush. Oh, yeah. So he's Bob Holly in every respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Guys and doing an awesome <laughs> drop kick. He's like 10 foot in the air. Bang. Um, so Osprey grabs a mic tells MJF to keep running Uh, he says after what you said about my family last week I'm going to put you through pain you can't even imagine bruv Um, not a single person here is going to acknowledge the American title they don't respect you after you trashed the international title after you dropped it in the garbage Um, men worked for that title to have a legacy people like Pac Orange Cassidy John Moxley Ray Phoenix Roderick Strong and himself he busts their asses week in and week out for the fans MGF doesn't fit that criteria he's not worthy of holding the international title and the crowd starts chanting USA um, but Osprey tells them MGF doesn't re- represent the American spirit but all in he'll restore honour to the international title uh, and MGF gets on the mic and says the uh, crowd are disgusting turncoats for cheering for Will Ospreay and at Wembley, at Wembley Stadium MGF will embarrass Osprey in front of his crooked teeth countrymen uh, uh-huh. Osprey though won't make it to all in <laughs> Mr. Bean looking at asses uh, Osprey won't make it to all in as tonight everybody dies and I thought that's the catchphrase of uh, another wrestler <laughs> <laughs> and then out came Lance Archer but thoughts on this opening promo uh, for me, it wasn't as strong as last week's stuff with the huge flag, and it was a bit much of the same, more of the same. Um, the, the delivery is fantastic, as it often is, on MGF's part. Will Ospreay, right, he used to be absolutely abysmal at promos. Yes. Like, at almost laughing stock levels. Clearly, he's grafted and grafted and grafted and grafted um, because towards the end of his New Japan run, he was very, very good. In AEW, when he's in there with Shivani, he's, like, quite, you know, self-effacing. He's charming. He knows when to fire up. He's got a good, like, one-liner in him, a bit of wordplay. He's relaxed, isn't he? You can yeah, tell he's composed. not nervous, yeah. Having said that, because he's obviously very new to this, he still gets flustered at the, right, it's a volley. It's a back yeah, and forth. Yeah. Um one wrestler on one side, you on the other. He'll say kind of the opposite of what he's trying to say sometimes, and he can infer his meaning, but it's still not clean. It's still not... It's Sometimes it's good to be flustered. You know, look at me. Sometimes I get flustered. But it's just not something... You can tell that he's overthinking it, or that he gets a little bit... It'll come with time. I mean, if you can nail promos, he can nail back-and-forth promos. It's mm. just one... It's like the next, like... It's like the advanced class... 
Um, but there's still that, there's still a bit of awkwardness when he's jousting, I feel. Especially when you're in there with MJF, I suppose. It's like there must be intimidating. Getting there with the, the tiger. <laughs> Good luck with that. It's been, t- like, I like the story for getting to Wembley. Kind of an inspired idea from the beginning. But it's been two weeks now, and we were talking about bad crowds before. Unrelated to noise, why, why are you getting this wrong, Americans? I know he's wearing the... Fur- Stop shagging it. It's like just <laughs> Stop the, the car. Stop it. Oh, my God, who was it? Who was it? <laughs> get it. Like, literally get with the program, please. Yeah. Like, because it's not the fault of the wrestlers. It's absolutely designed. What, the, the, the bleed red, white, and blue. They I, do, I don't right? know what you expect. I love that for them. If I was there, I'd bleed neon green. But, like, <laughs> I just, just get, like... Oh, Why? Oh. Are you a predator? <laughs> I am when it comes to Mountain G, man. Beep, 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 beep. Do you understand the assignment? Just yeah. get what he's doing and stop inadvertently hijacking uh, because you're all over a goddamn country. Uh, 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 USA. Oh God, I can't help yeah, it. Yeah, basically, because he had the temerity to it. say in the international title's better than the US title. They're like, I'm not standing for that. Oh. Can't stand for that, boy. Sorry. The guy you can't find wrong loves it there. Hey, you're trying for us on here. Maybe everything's going to be all right. Uh, and then we got Will Ospreay versus Lance Archer. They didn't mess about. Ospreay immediately got planted by a huge choke slam. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Incredibly. Look, like he was 10 feet in the friggin' air. <laughs> he effectively was. Yeah. It's got to be at least eight feet in the air. All right. Like, I know we've 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 had our say about Will Ospreay maybe letting his opponents get too much or doing a bit too much back and forth. I love this match. Oh, this is really of, good. Like, it was, he's got his ass kicked. He <laughs> just, like, it was, like, Oh, yeah, well, I'll see you all in. Oh, God. And then he was like, right, oh, Pele kicked, I think he Pele kicked him and he went outside. He's like, right, okay. Osprey time now. Jumps, immediately gets power slammed on the floor. It's like, are you going to be all right? <laughs> I think Lance Archer might be heading to Wembley at this rate. Um, but he took too long to follow up. George Yakin with the cameraman. Osprey hit a hurricane rotter into the barricade. Uh, Osprey followed that up when they get back in the ring with a springboard drop kick. Uh, and then got choke slammed off the top to take us to break. Uh, when we come back, he flips out of a choke slam, hit a hook kick, tried for the Oz cutter, uh, but just jumped straight into a black hole slam from Archer for a two count. Uh, also a huge spine buster. And uh, uh, Osprey can almost well, almost fails to get the shoulder up for that count. Uh, but he comes back with a thrust kick. Uh, Archer just no sells it. Uh, but Osprey hits a standing Spanish fly. Uh, then they go up to the turn buckle. Archer wanted another another avalanche choke slam. Osprey counted into a Spanish fly and an Oz cut for two. Um, sets up for the hidden blade, but gets hit with a huge lariat from Lance Archer. Um, it's just reminded me how much I've missed seeing him in the ring, to be honest. Uh, there was a step-up corner knee in there. He wanted the blackout. Osprey spins into a DDT and a diving hidden blade. Archer kicks out a one. Love that. Uh, and Osprey was like, right, I'll do it properly now. Takes the elbow pad off, nails it flush, uh, and gets the one, two, three. Quick word on the match, then we'll talk post-match. This is pretty much ideal, I think, yeah. for what you wanted. They didn't overdo it. It didn't feel like there was this... I know they did the one count for the hidden blade, right? But Jar thought, in context, situationally, was really well done. It didn't feel like Os- it felt like Osprey. Maybe I don't know if he's like sort of he's taken feedback throughout his entire career. If you look at some of his facials early, like ridiculous. I know he's still a bit exaggerated now, but my god, he has. I think maybe he's just wanting feedback. This didn't quite feel like he was straining for epic straining for yeah. fight of his life. I thought, dare I say it, this was almost understated by his standards and frankly, like, almost all the better for it. Um, Mon- selling, Monster of the Week stuff, isn't it? Basically? Yeah. His selling was as good as his bumping here and his bumping was just absolutely <laughs> blew away great. And they, I think they just measured when exactly to stop yeah, like there was some kick outs where I'm thinking, bloody hell, this is still going. I didn't expect this. I'm locked in and then, oh, all right, there's the finisher. I just thought this was really, 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 really good. Again, I wouldn't describe it as great. There was maybe one time on the show that I thought, that was great, that was AEW. But this is still really, really good. And, you know, I think they told such a good, like, well-measured in terms of runtime, like the content, the selling ratio, everything, that this otherwise oof, crowd got really into this. 11 yeah, minutes they went. It just felt like the match... I don't know if this is my personal experience or it's a general thing. Just felt like the match Will Ospreay needed. 
the the so I feel much. like he was a TV wrestler here. Yeah. Whereas a lot of times he tries to. Sorry, I'm stepping on your dick. But it's, uh, it seems a lot of the time that like, he tries to sort of condense his New Japan feature epic into a shorter run time. This was like Will Ospreay TV wrestler, this. Yeah, yeah. It, like we said this about in the preview yesterday, I think some of the criticism around the hour match with MJF was that. It's like how, how much were people really connecting with it despite everything they were doing to each other? And that was always going to be a problem the more you saw of that style from Osprey. And it sort of ties into what I'm realising is like a personal bugbear of mine at the moment is it's not just that the bar has been raised to what's expected from your standard match now. It's the fact that because the bar's been raised, so many wrestlers are not are forgetting to apply themselves to the match and are instead applying the things they think they should do. And this was absolutely without question Lance Archer versus Will Ospreay. And it could have easily fallen into Will Ospreay versus anybody. Will Ospreay versus Jeanette. They could have and Lance Archer can do that. So like physically, Lance mm-hmm. Archer, I don't know, maybe less so now at his age or whatever, but he's got it in him to level up to kind of like do the freakish big man stuff. But I want a bit less of that from my big man guys. And I want a Will Ospreay to acknowledge the size difference and apply a different strategy. And I think I want this across the board in wrestling. I don't think it's happening enough. And I got all of that here as well. Yeah. It's, it doesn't just have to be really back to basics, running from the giant hit and move sort of thing. But there's a, a happy medium that isn't met enough between the different character dynamics. Yeah. Um, on that as well, Lance Archer took this that DDT from Osprey and it looked awesome. Like you can like sp- yeah. you can just really spring into these things. And um, but he only did it really once, mm. which I thought was again like effective, understated. Just on this wider TV match, everything has to be a great problem. I'm trying to be a little bit more realistic about it, right? If if you're a wrestler in this day and age, like it would be do you think it's too brave for like one of them to say, oh, you know what, I'm gonna put the toothpaste back in the tube here? And just and just try and be really sort of understated. I and think all that's the rest how MJF got over. I, I think yeah. that's how he got over in the first place. Yeah, but who's going to do it now? Mm. And would you be the one to sort of volunteer yourself, or would you go like maybe that's just what this audience wants? You know, yeah. I just think it's an interesting question. Shame it, man. Shut up, man. <laughs> you were going to use that as your stock answer to about fifteen different AW questions, aren't you? I think I know the guy. Done it twice on this podcast yeah. already. Me and uh, me and Sid, you're doing a Q and A this afternoon. Um, I wonder if anyone's going to ask about. It. Yeah, well, come up if it doesn't. Get your questions in. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but anyway, post match, MJF attacks Will Osprey after the belt, uh, hits him with a brain buster, puts on the diamond, beautiful diamond ring. He's going to clobber him with it again, uh, but Carl Fletcher runs down and fights him off. Um, he bails up the ramp. Don Callis is in there with him as well. He says, uh, "I know you told me not to get in. I know you told me not to get involved." Um, since he's no longer part of the family, but uh, Osprey's his best friend, and uh, oh, and uh, he called <laughs> Dick. <laughs> he's talking about my, my best friend, so uh, he called MJF a narcissistic <gasps> asshole. Said uh, Karma's going to bite you in the ass. Um, you don't give a damn about America. I was genuinely surprised we didn't get a USA jam there, to be honest. <laughs> I do. <laughs> USA, USA. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry. I just, you know, I see the colors and they never run. <laughs> Neither does my patriotism. I love it here. Chicks in America, <laughs> two of my favorite things. Uh, but he heard what uh, MJF said about foreign wrestlers last week. He talked about dreaming of wrestling in America. Uh, he's forever grateful for this country to give him his uh, dream girl, dream car, dream life. Speaks for everyone in Australia, uh, in the UK. Everyone's sick of your bull crap, he says. Uh, come on, let's have a bare knuckle fight. Get down here. Uh, MGF does the whole, you want to fight? You want to fight? No. Um, wannabe Will Ospreay doesn't call the shots, he says. I do. Uh, no one punches an American hero in the face and gets away with it. <laughs> Amazing. It's only, it was only. That's like the that's the line from like the best worst eighties action yeah, film you've it, ever seen in your like, life. Yeah, combined, it made gave me flashbacks of. Uh, it all makes me bleed my own blood. Yeah. <laughs> um, next week they're going to fight though, uh, and he, he thought uh, all in was bad last year. He's going to kangaroo kick his face off and leave him in a pool of his own blood like I Daniel think that's Garcia. A great, great heel twist, by the way. In general, mm. framing that move of all moves as this deadly kill shot, yeah. especially now that he's working Fletcher, it's really good. Could do the kangaroo headlock. Could, well, he's jacked enough. Yeah, to pull that off. It's just weird when he said it, and then you remember, like, wow, these two have wrestled at Wembley. Yeah, it's such yeah. A, because you think about him fighting Cole, and you forget that 
they did that as well. Oh, that's, I think there was a lot to like about uh, Better Than You, Baby, before it badly, badly went off the rails. Everything like, in the live setting was great. Yeah. It's such amazing chemistry. Shout out to Adam Cole. I hope he's all right. Oh, Adam Cole's doing good. Uh, guy's a sweetheart. I hate everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Osprey is giving you the one to blame when MJF dismantles his boy. Uh, Fletcher raises Osprey's hand and Callus just just looks. Still there, isn't it? The Callus thing. Still there. Still ain't going away. What's the favor he's going to ask? Why would you join the family? What There isn't a family. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know Takesh does. Well, maybe I'm being a bit of a dick. Like, Takesh does not around. Yeah. Hobbs is injured. <sighs> Just get rid of it. <laughs> Out of the way, yo. Out of the way, yo. But yeah, looking forward to that next week. Yeah. Uh, we get a great video package as if we needed to remind how great Swerve Strickland is as world champion. Uh, ahead of the Danielson thing in a little bit. Uh, and then we got footage of the Suzuki Jericho match from last week with the snapping of the fingers and he's broken his finger or whatever. Uh, and there's, uh, I'm alluring tree uh, with uh, Marvez. Uh, big meals there. Uh, Brian Keith, too. Uh, they've got a cake to celebrate. 102 days. Feels longer. Um, as uh, FTW champion, Jericho says, there's never been a cake in wrestling that hasn't been smashed in someone's face. Um, not tonight, though. Uh, the, th- the, only, the only thing that's going to be smashed is Katsuyori Shibata's face after uh, he defeats the murder, after he defeated the murdered grandpa. Uh, he calls out for being alone. Samoa Joe and Hook are never coming back, basically, he says. Uh, but the bad apple Brian Keith is going to take him out next week. Uh, Bill gave, Big Bill gave uh, Alex Marvez the cake, and Keith told him to eat it if he respects Chris Jericho. And he had a little bit of frosting. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> you, I know you watch Blood and Guts. <laughs> Marvez, Did you see Alex Marvez in the airport with Will Ospreay? Uh, I don't no, know. Right, okay. When we get back downstairs to the office. Good Lord. Good Lord. I feel like it wasn't the airport. Sorry, not the airport. It was the car. Yes, I did see the car. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Do you have to drive one of these things or something? You say, nope. (laughs) I like the bit where he asked him a question and forgot it was an interview, so he didn't hold the microphone near him. So Will Osprey's like, bravo. I don't know what he's saying. Can't hear you, mate. (laughs) Probably bravo. Yeah. 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 Something like that. (laughs) Uh, Thoughts on this? None. No, not really. <laughs> it was yeah. brief, I suppose. So it was like we got it out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Mandatory uh, Chris Jericho segment on Dynamite. <laughs> Check. <laughs> Are we six man at Wembley? Is that where we're headed? Well, oh yeah, I didn't even think where we're. No. What you got? Well, I'm thinking that there's going to be maybe too many dippy matches at Wembley, right? I think they are all the pushers. Like Kenny Omega promo lives rent free my goddamn head. Yeah. Oh, well, there's a lot of pieces. Learning tree, then there's Hook, Shibata, Suzuki. I reckon they could get Joe to have a weekend to come over. Seems to me like if they're going to do a uh, stadium stampede, maybe the learning tree could have one more, one more guy. But we'll uh, let that settle. Sorry. My notes here, and uh, it looks like we've got a women's match in the first hour. And it looks like I've forgotten to do a song. <laughs> well, just two again. It was, yeah, there was this two. This has never happened matches. in Dynamite history. Sidge, is that past the test? Two and two. No, it doesn't because one of them was a squash. Uh, take Told a guess. You. How long the uh, second match went? At uh, one minute, two seconds. Uh, one thirty-five. You can't press the button. It's time to play the game. Time to play the game. Ha 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 ha! Sorry, just hearing that again in the immediate after I've seen that tweet where someone's like, I just realised it's Tamina and not Sidge. <laughs> Should I do an impression to see if it's. I can. I mean, I, I think you can nail the first bit, definitely. It's time to play the game! <laughs> and that was the laugh. What's the second bit again? Time to play the game. Time to play the game. <laughs> I do. Uh, I do. Rock's Jake. just seen that and he's like, buy that man a house. <laughs> I did Jake King for that. Thank you for that tweet. Uh, it was one minute, 16 seconds. So I'm closer. Have one, have one. 
Uh, but we got a uh, CMLL uh, Women's Championship title eliminator here, um, Willow Nightingale versus Chris Statlander. Uh, Nightingale got jumped at the start. Um, Chris Statlander hit a missile drop kick, and the ref goes, right, that's fair enough, let's go. Um, go to the outside. Nightingale sent Statlander to the barricade, but Mr. Cannonball, that took us to break. We come back. Short arm clotheslines and a spine buster from Nightingale, but Statlander avoided the doctor bomb and cut her off with a... I put her in an electric chair. I thought he was going to do the electric chair, but it was face back front way. Um, scissor kick. They fight to the apron. Nightingale hits a Death Valley driver on the edge of the ring. Crowd love that. Uh, and she grabs Hathaway, but takes too much time, and Statlander just drops. does slap him on the back of the head. Just good. <laughs> You'd have hated that. That is my kryptonite right there. Wow. Getting slapped on the back of the head. Who I, does that to you? I, know, I don't know. if It's just, just and when you see people like footballers celebrate, and they're like, yeah, and like smack him on the head, I'd be like, oh, you Okay, hands off me. I don't know why. It's the same thing for my dad for some reason. Has anybody ever done it on a What Went Down video? No. Don't yeah. encourage that. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. I just, I, I'm or, not like making even by accident, in disco. So many people bustling behind no. you. No. I you know, just stand back when this is flailing around. <laughs> Get some on you otherwise. Uh, anyway. Uh. Back, back inside, uh, Statlander wants another missile dropkick, but Nightingale hits a huge po- power bomb followed by a DDT for two. Um, Statlander knocks Ma- Nightingale to the mat out of the corner, hit a 450 for a nice near fall. Um, and then Hathaway... Great 2.999 from Willow. Yeah, the 450, yeah. We're going to join that club, the Roman Akata Kurt Angle Kenny Omega <laughs> Club. <laughs> go, it's a good club. It's a good club. Uh, then Hathaway, well, he distracts the referee after sliding the chain to um, Statlander. Aubrey gets distracted, and Statlander hits a discus lariat with the chain um, and gets the one, two, three. I like the speed with which Hathaway. I was like, give me, give me back. I'll put it in my pocket afterwards. Afterwards, uh, Stokely gives Statlander a chair, and she just nails Nightingale with it. Uh, and security gets gets down to separate them. And uh, she de- decks a few of them, uh, but Hathaway's like, hey, save it. She's got a tile shot. I wish Orange Cassidy had saved Willow Nightingale. Willow Nightingale saved Orange Cassidy. I thought for a split second, Willow's got to have some mates. Yeah. It was the... I mean, if anyone's going to have mates, it should be Willow. Yeah. yeah. It's the... I'm not being funny. Pro wrestling is inherently bad. Uh, like, you have to... Your baby faces have to have mates, but the heels have to get heat, and those things yeah. have to happen at the same time. And the book just kind of has to be selective about it, even though it makes no sense, especially when, as you say, there's a there's a pre-existing relationship there. The episodic TV model is fundamentally flawed. So I didn't really have a problem with this because you kind of have to get the heat yeah. sometimes, God yeah. damn it. In terms of the match, again, a continuation of the theme of this feud. It's a very, very 101 wrestling, 101. You know what you do is... <laughs> so they've got the feud. It's a trilogy... Babyface just wins through skill, but not decisively. Then the heel can't sanction that, so the heel does sneak attacks and insults. Then there's a second match, and then the heel cheats to win. Then there's going to be a rubber match where the babyface will prevail and triumph and get her bloody justice. It is every wrestling feud I've ever seen, but performed very well. Mm -hmm. And this was a continuation of that, which means they obviously are holding all of their best stuff back, those dramatic near falls. I mean, there was a couple in here, yeah. but that big sort of right, we're absolutely going for it. Let's do the very best version of this match possible. They weren't doing that last night on Dynamite. This was a chapter. Like, some of the actual work was really strong. Like, some of it looked like it really, really hurt. It was dramatic where it needed to be, but not too much. You're basically, you know, assessing a chapter in something. The crowd went really with it. They were with it, but it's not like this. They're not losing their minds for it. This was good and not great. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, it was absolutely fine. You would definitely book it, book it exactly the way they booked it. I was a touch bored, if I'm being brutally honest. There was a, times in this I was drifting off a little bit. I, like, it's just... <laughs> I don't love their chemistry, and I'm trying to like it more than I think I actually do. And I love I'm, the start. Yeah. That I'll, drop kick. I want to believe that the last match, um, it'll just be like a hell for leather sort of thing. Mm. Willow's great in the um, like hardcore plunder setting, so I would welcome that, and it suits what they've done. You know, it's got to end some way. So I'm going to continue to have faith in the third match, but I still don't think I've seen the match between these two that they can have. Yeah, I'm still holding out hope that the big... St- Presumably the weapons have been introduced now. There'll be a big stepped up rubber match. When I go to the 101 as well, 
And it is. It's every wrestling feud you've ever seen. And maybe that's part of the problem here. Like, I haven't seen... Surely, right, in the build-up, yes, there's been backstage sneak attacks and the like. Surely, it should be easier to get heat on, of all people, Willow Nightingale. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, she's so beloved. She's so over. But, uh, I think maybe it's becoming a bit of a failure. It's nice that there's a, I don't know, there's a title involved because it's AEW. There's about 30, if you consider, <laughs> like, every associated partner that they have. Maybe the one-on-one thing isn't just a foundation to do some... A foundation for increased... Like, a platform for increased representation for for the women. This is the third concurrent women's program that gets a lot of play on Dynamite. Yes, there's Thunder Rosa and Deanna Parazzo, right? This is the third one that's getting proper concurrent play, and that's like... That is progress, that yeah. is. So it is good on those terms, if if not completely overdue. Maybe there needs to be more flair. Maybe there needs, needs to be more focus in terms of the creative because it's got to be considered a, a, a maybe even a small failure that with how over and beloved like universally Willow Nightingale is that people don't hate Statlander. Is it because they don't really want to boo Statlander? She's such an ass kicker. Her stuff looks so great. Yeah. She's essential. She's not a day one I think she turned up on like the eighth episode of Dynamite, if not before, mm. like very, very early 2019. I don't see Statlander as someone who I was ever bored of. Mm. I think, oh, I'm desperate for her to turn heel. I'm not saying she's bad at it, but maybe that's something to do with it as well. But there's got to be a reason why this isn't absolutely awesome because the ingredients are so great. You might be on something there, you know, as well. Like, not I'm, just, I often am. Not just being like virtually an AW original, but if you think about her, the injury layoffs that just broke everybody's hearts. Yeah. yeah. And the nature, like we were there for one, the nature of her comebacks, the comeback in Vegas plus the Arcade Anarchy comeback. Just two oh, yeah. Yeah, all-timer moments for like, like AW fans, let alone Chris Statlander fans. There's a lot of babyface credit in the bank that was never really fully yeah. explored and... Now she's a heel and you don't get to live through that. Yeah. That was the one proper women's match, full-length women's match on the show. So we have to get to the name of the game. Before we get to that, we have to get to the aim of the game. The aim of the game is to identify to the hour, minute, and second, the first time you hear the first note for the first entrance theme for the first woman to appear and wrestle the only obligatory women's match on Dynamite. Blow your nose and get it away from me. And we do this. To italicize, put in bold, and underscore the idea that ah, it feels a bit obligatory, this. It feels like something they have feel like they feel they have to do rather than something that they are truly embracing as a passion project and now you know maybe things are on the turn yeah i was talking about how those three concurrent women's programs on dynamite kind of unheard of change might be happening slowly but until you get to feature length feature length women's matches on the show there's always gonna be that uh, there's always gonna be that it feels (laughs) like they have to do it rather than truly want to do it. And is it them? If you look at ROH, it might be with those suits at uh, Warner, the standards and practices over at that Turner Picture. Corporation, right? <laughs> okay. Who knows? But you're thinking, God, this is a mouthful. Could you jingleize it, please, Michael? I'm sure I can. I'm kind of jingleizing what I perceive to be <laughs> AEW's cynical thought process. And here's that jingle. <laughs> hey, don't worry, guys. <laughs> When the women come out to play, the main event ain't too far away. That's the aim of the game. The name of the game is, well, this is ladies night. And I'm thinking, ooh, what a night. Ah. <laughs> that's like it's panicked. It's panicked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. Well, this is Marvel's night. And I'm thinking, ooh, what a night. Ah. That'd be brilliant if like they crack it, two women's matches, a, a proper division, thriving, and we get to switch it up. And it's like... What, what's Marvez doing this week? And it's just Marvez night. He gets his own little feature. <laughs> Where's the roofing in, report? And yeah. What kind of scoops is he digging out? Two weeks in a row for him, you know? He's he's on a bit of his own role at the moment. He's on his, he's on his own little golf cart, driving around, <laughs> grabbing people for interviews. <laughs> uh, thanks as always. <laughs> Inspector Marvez. <laughs> <laughs> A second Inspector Gadget this week. Huh? In such a reason that uh, Cody could be Inspector Gadget because uh, Solar Sico is giving claw at the moment with his, with his ah. little claw. His own partridge. I was researching uh, Joel Gertner promos. Yeah. Oh. And uh, one of them was he was wanted to inspect her gadget. Yeah. What does that mean? Vagina. Got it. Um, Does he know about Joel Gertner? He was the quintessential stud muffin. I, I've, I've seen. You've shown me before, I think. Um... 
Thanks as always to uh, Jose. Yeah, busted more nuts than peanut factory. <laughs> Thanks to Jose. He's a lost stuff. <laughs> Thanks to Jose Palomares uh, at the Ho 11. Um, Gertner was Joel Gort more like. Yeah. And the panda below himself, Adam Blair, at Adam Wilton for the guys who always take care of the um, data. Uh, thank you for this sort of thing. Uh, panda Blair on a work trip this week. You're joking. Not another one? Well, I, th- he's, I think he's in Houston, maybe. Might be just on holiday. <laughs> Texas. Sounds brilliant. You see his d- uh, due picture. Yeah. The other day. There's always a due picture now. It's an energy one, wasn't it? It's already a lot in a standard can of Mountain Dew before you then double load it with caffeine. Yes. <laughs> it was at a place called The Rustic where their sign reads, beer is good, but beers are better. <laughs> good stuff. It's a good life. Uh, but yes, Jose Palomares stepping up this week. Um, oh, Sige, what are our, what were our guesses in descending D- order? We don't know. know. Don't know. tell us. Never I like doing learn. that weird thing with my voice, the inflection. The inflection. Um, let me just get my phone out. Um, and one of them was a haircut reminder. One of them was my uh, mobile provider telling me that I'm nearly out of um, data. Oh. Your cell. One of them was uh, me cell doing the notes, the notes for this. Uh, God, the extent to which our patter is just completely warped when I'm doing <laughs> this. Another one is um, just a verification code from a bank for a purchase that I made. Good. I love these little... So in bits. fact, follow me at M. Sidgwick because what I purchased... Oh, thank God. I thought you were just going to give out bank <laughs> details. <laughs> was a GoFundMe donation for Marcel oh, Laviolette. Nice. So if you follow me at M. Sidgwick and you want to help out a huge friend of the channel and community of yeah. like really long-time fans you've got here, follow me at M. Sidgwick on Twitter. I'll show you how to help somebody out. And then, um, yeah, just Google verification. Um, one from the message. Uh, so descending order... Is uh, Adam Wilborn? I don't know you from Adam. One hour, seventeen minutes, fifty nine seconds. Oh yeah, you did that. Moi, yeah. One hour, twenty minutes, twenty five seconds. Michael Hamflat. One hour, twenty eight minutes, ten seconds. Dumbass. What off. the hell is even that? You <laughs> me? <laughs> uh, yeah, so we were about an hour off. You <laughs> me? <laughs> yeah, we were all way off here, but uh, I was closest, uh, so I take the win this week. Um, taking it to Michael Sidgwick, three correct guesses on the year, Michael Hamlet five, and if you add those two scores together, you get mine. Uh, that's eight correct guesses on the year. Proud you are. Have you ever won Haley Slay's night? Because <laughs> <laughs> we have. I did. First try. Uh, what happens if, so if we do end the game before the end of this year? Yeah. We just throw this out, right? There's yeah, no, I can't. Yeah, be, yeah, I, I, I increasingly can't be asked to do it anymore. Will you blow your nose? Well, but like what I'm saying is, is that the year hasn't. You're ended. right. You're right. I don't know. I'm not sure. Never know. Never know, man. I hate you so much, dickhead. <laughs> we see footage <laughs> of. Boris uh, Holiday. That's a real piece of shit move. <laughs> Have a great time away. Shut sister. up! <laughs> Shut up! I'll kill you all. I will kill you all. <laughs> We see footage of Brian Danielson's interview with Renee Paquette last week. God, I've, you know, I've already told you, man. I've already gone places. Gone to that place. Gone to that place. <laughs> no, I've gone to that place. Next, there's one, there's one place to go left, and it's that place. Um, Get out with me. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett interrupting and saying, <laughs> you, need to, to you need to you need to go all in on this, basically. Um, but Danielson comes out, puts over the crowd, and said, that's not just a cheap pop. Him and his wife got their engagement photos taken in Green- Greensville. Taz just went, Why? <laughs> Oh, God, <laughs> uh, and uh, Daniel said, when you look at those photos, don't it all seem to go? Don't know where you guys are going. Uh, you don't realize you're in the good old days <laughs> until, they're, until they're gone. Uh, but he's here to talk about presents and promises. And I thought, oh, great, some presents. Uh, but no. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know one wakes up. Oh, how, good me. how can I uh, strip the profundity out of all of this? Uh, how can I trivialize? It's great, this as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can say that now. It's yeah. Cut across and do both. Oh, what's this for my cake? I think I'll eat it too. <laughs> uh, he talked about uh, a few years ago having to retire, having it all taken away from him. Now he's back in AW, having the most fun in his career. He was able to be present here. We got a thank you, Brian. Uh, and he gets very emotional. 
A little homage to The Rock as well. Yeah. Careful, you do that. You were made to Wembo. Look at your boy now. <laughs> um, but now, but you know what's when he did that? There was a big scar on his arm. No, no, I didn't see it. There's a big scar on his arm, and you're thinking, "Oh God!" I mean, I don't know if that was like a, a, an intentional touch to do it with that arm, but it was mm. like bloody hell. He has been through the freaking ringer yeah. with the life, and he? um, he's already gone places. Yeah, <laughs> but he says now it's time to talk about promises. Talks about promising his daughter that he'd stop wrestling full time uh, when she turned seven. Promises his family this would be the last contract he signs in his career, and uh, yeah, as you pointed out, reminds us that his. Contract expires, well, as we're recording today, he said, tomorrow, of course. He came to AEW to kick people's heads in and to win the AEW World title. He's kicked a lot of people's heads in, uh, but he hasn't won the AEW World title yet. Um, he says this is his last shot, biggest show of the year. Uh, doctors and family don't want him to wrestle, but he promises the fans to be present and promises them he'll give 100%. I like that. He said, can't give any more than that. Um, at all in with mind, body, and soul, he will go all in. He's interrupted by Swerve Strickland and Prince Nana, who come down to the ring. We get a nice sort of dueling yes and Swerve's house chants. Um, and Swerve says he respects the hell out of Danielson for what he's done for uh, young people. Um, he'd want Danielson to have his moment at any other time, but this, <laughs> this is Swerve's time. Uh, Danielson is the greatest in his generation, but Strickland is one of a kind. Uh, he said, you wanted to kick everyone's heads in, but you couldn't handle it when people started kicking back. The AW World title isn't an achievement award. It proves you're the best in the world, and that's what he is, says Swerve. Um, Strickland put over uh, Danielson's epic fight against Osprey, but he lost that, and he got hurt, and he lost against the Elite and in the Anakin Arena. Meanwhile, Swerve beat Osprey and led Team AW to Great a Great use a of detail here. Yeah. Yeah. Great use of detail. Uh, talked about competing at All In last year whilst Danielson's body was so broken down he couldn't even travel there on a plane. Um, he says, I'm the most dangerous man in AEW, uh, and I promise you, Brian Danielson, you won't be walking out of all in as champion. You might not be walking ever again. He feels very proud of himself, and he goes to leave, but just before he does, Danielson stops him and says, actually, I've got one more promise. If I don't win the AEW World Championship at all in, I will never wrestle again. Title versus career. Danielson offers a handshake. Strickland accepts. Um, and he says, that's very noble of you, Brian. Um, but don't keep that promise to me. Keep it to your family. I love this. Yeah. I absolutely loved it. I thought Danielson's promo was really, really nice. And just as I was thinking, is he getting a little bit too, gee golly, I'm nearer the end of the beginning, but yeah. what a great ride it's been when he should be like, I want to see the dragon just want to be a, a careerist, ambitious, ruthless guy. I mean, you think... I can do that next week. It's all on the line. Yeah. Um, so I thought maybe that's the time to do that is like the go home promo. So there's plenty of time for that to happen. Um, Swerve Strickland here, I thought was absolutely phenomenal. Um, it is, we've seen historically how difficult it is for that cool heel on the rise to turn baby face and to retain that which got them over. I mean, he's absolutely nailed it. I know he has to play situational heel here. Yeah. Because obviously people are going to want to see Danielson win the title, but his sinister... Um, uh, this word has been completely abused on social media. His sinister aura yeah. was like glowing. He seemed to really lock into this particular storyline on the Knights vs. Strickland. I thought he was just tremendous. His body language, the way he sort of moves on camera... He's just great. I love this world championship run. I really do. And have they signposted the finish? Well, well, narratively, I don't know. Um, the big, huge building that they've booked in Seattle is a bit right. Okay, maybe that's the site of Danielson's last match, and the scheduling rather than the creative has signposted what might or might not happen at all in. I still think this is the way to go. I think you're going to just add it, like incredible drama on the match. I don't know how much they need to lay it on thick, right? Maybe I'm stepping on dicks all over the place in terms of previews. I would have like testimonies from like the big guns of the AEW roster, like leading up with like, what's Danielson meant for your career? Yeah. Yeah. Why is he the GOAT? Like make it the biggest thing that they've, one of the biggest things that they've done in this promotion. Have they signposted the finish? I'm not sure because they could always do Swerve versus... Derby 2 in like some ridiculous plunder match. The fact that there's a real 
Um, it's all basically a Pacific Northwest title picture <laughs> ahead of All In Grand Slam in Tacoma Dome, isn't it? Yeah. I think that's really interesting. I think that's really shrewd. And I think the way that they've... This is like proper AEW stuff. They're yeah. mapping it all out where you can see the various combinations and you're thinking, well, there's two out of three Pacific Northwest wrestlers. Um, in the t- There's three Pacific Northwest wrestlers heading into that Tacoma Dome show right on the cusp of this main event scene. So I think it's all very well laid out, very, very elegant. Um, in Swerve and Derby, you've got the history as well. Ultimately, I think it'll make every near fall matter that much more. And the meta use of everything in terms of the contract legitimately expiring, the fact that he's been on record saying, you know, I want to retire at a certain age because I promised my daughter and all the rest of it. The injuries thing they're playing up as well, that thing is really, really, really shrewd as well because it's it, it either sounds like or they've been incredibly savvy in making it sound like uh, now is the time that Danielson has to go. He kind of has to go. In my head canon, genuinely, there is this sort of doubt that what if the idea was to do Swerve Danielson 2 in Tacoma, but the doctors in the run-up to All In just saying, nah, just do, well, you, you might have one more in you. And the yeah. fact that Danielson's selling has been so expert in his last two or three in-ring outings as well. And the fact that he isn't wrestling, well, I know he's wrestling Jarrett. I don't know if I would have done the Jarrett match. That's a separate thing for how we preview it or whatever. I want it to feel like, no, you've got one more if you're lucky. Well, I just want to say I agree with that. I think it's less predictable we than talked it was. We talked about this on the news, didn't we? Yeah. On account of everything Sidge's articulated. Because what there. a way to go out as well. Yeah, this is like the opposite of what sometimes happens with AEW. And they've actually taken something that I thought I was fairly clear on. And now I honestly don't know as a result of the stipulation because of all the permutations Sidge has laid out. I actually think the Jarrett match helps this too because it feels like a, a tick box exercise. And when do you need to tick boxes when your time's yeah. running out? So it's almost Did anyone except you have this on the dream last list? Not dream for the whole two list. years, yeah. but very recently, I think people have probably <laughs> added it. Um, but yeah, it does feel like this cool thing that Danielson, knowing Danielson is thinking, what my, what have you got left that you want to get to? And then, well, th- that's kind of weird. Quite fancy Never that. done that. Yeah. So it's like, well, I best get in it now. What they've done here, right, is create a new sting. They've just retired the last one and they've got themselves a brand new sting, right? Yeah. If Danielson wins this belt, he might tearfully say... You know, like, I, I promised I would retire if I won, but I promised to retire to Birdie, and I've still got his belt. So I guess when I lose the belt, that's it for me. Yeah. And then oh, you've, just wow. got, you've just got uh, yourself a sting run with Brian Danielson as the world champion every single time he steps in the ring. Like, that's the potential of him winning the title, and that's if he doesn't... And that's if he doesn't have one of the most glorious and celebrated retirements ever in this, at this giant stadium show in the process putting over a Swerve Strickland like as the proper champion. The, the transitional champion stuff is gone. Nobody thinks like that anymore about Swerve, but what a way to sort of complete yeah. that project than having him be the guy to retire Danielson. It's, I, I think this is brilliant. I think this is honestly masterful stuff from a main event. I'm not trying to do the old, well, I actually thought it was fine all along, but because a lot of people were getting increasingly pissier about this match last week when you just had all that heat around Hangman and Swerve. I did think this was fine all along, and I had a mm. good feeling it was more just about, I said, getting blood and guts out of the way. As it turned out, they found a way to actually fold it quite nicely into the story. Uh, Brian's injuries and the various injuries he has experienced were just used wonderfully by Swear Strickland here. There was a proper sense of, um, like, like the, the old yellow thing that wrestling loves. Nobody is really saying that you need putting out the pasture, but I'll be the one to say it, and yeah. I'll do it. Big, big day all in then. It is a big day. I just remembered I forgot to take my hay fever medicine. That's why okay. I'm sniffing. So I'm going to go and it's blow my nose whilst you talk about what a day and night that's going to be. Wait a minute. Are we... Oh, thanks, Scott. Cheers. <laughs> really thrown there. It's a Thursday. Yes. Uh, which guy with this one? Uh, yes, it is a big day, of course. It is a big day, Sige, isn't it? It all is, in. it is, it is, it is. Because between the hours of approximately three-ish and approximately... <laughs> Eight-ish, nine-ish maybe. We're all going to be at Wembley. Three or ten, won't we? Yeah, probably, yeah. Uh, we're going to be at Wembley Stadium, uh, hopefully with a lot of people watching and listening. like three till five to get any seats. Yeah. Pre-show, and then yeah. four hours, like three till ten. Yeah. So a good seven hours or so in Wembley Stadium. But uh, 
I'd want to make that day even longer if I could. And I want to do that by getting to Wembley for 12 o'clock, find a perfect destination for a pint just minutes away from Wembley. So I'm not being just adding to the bit here. I didn't know where to go last time. I would like to have known. I would have wanted a pint. This is it. We've basically, you don't have to buy a ticket just to our live show, which is at whatculture.com forward slash tickets, 12 to 1.30. We're just giving you a perfect destination to go for a drink. The Crystal Club, get on our website, get not just a ticket, but get a Simon Miller foam up and down hand, a t-shirt with one of our faces on, and we're kicking the forbidden door open by uh, having stacks on a t-shirt for the first time ever at an AEW show. Hey, guys, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I just... Ugh, all back now. Well, I was just talking about our live show world. Oh, yeah. But after the live show, they can get the real uh, What Culture experience by seeing yourself or Simon Miller do some of the best videos we do yes. outside Wembley Stadium. And then probably just do what me and Sid had to do last year and join a, frankly, torturous tube queue trying to get home. Don't be doing that. Don't be doing that. Head over to go back to Crystal Club. All right, yeah. Because it's Sweet Chin Disco. Sounds perfect. With, what is it? Well, <laughs> I think it's a wrestling-themed disco, to be fair. Well, and, uh, there's, there's lots to shot with, but why would we do that? Yeah, uh, it's getting really. Uh, it's not. We, they think it's like a Stuart Lee bit, where the more they do it, the funnier it is. It's not. He can do it way more succinctly. I think Stuart Lee's that funny, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> wow, <laughs> big call, yeah, not Stuart Lee. Yeah. Not for you, not for me. More a Jim Carrey guy. Thanks very much. Uh, Thirty years in the mask. Thank you, thank you, Jim. Um, he's not dead, but you know. Uh, well. <laughs> Prince Nana and Matt Castro is going to be yeah, there. This could and be they, they, they're letting me host, so <laughs> what's going to happen? It's going to be as good as this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> join us. Just search for Sweet Chin Disco. And yeah, I'm not sure if you mentioned the, the T-shirts that we got our face on. No one's bought a T-shirt with my face on yet. So if you can buy that when you get your ticket, that'd really be appreciated. I'm what? fairly certain they have. Oh uh, yeah, it's a very petty competition has opened up in the office. <laughs> Won't tell you who he's competing against, but he is competing. Uh, that we should mention after the brilliant Daniel. Suit. It's weird, right? Because there's like it's quite easy. I wonder if because a lot of people have said this before. Maybe there's a bit of confusion on the website because like, you look quite a lot like the, dynamite. the picture for stacks, huh? Like yeah, the stacks T-shirt. Well, looks that photo was just together, so that's well, I know. That, but maybe it? maybe people have gotten confused and they've thought, oh, I'll get this T, I'll get the stack shirt. Ah, oh, what did the world want by mistake? Because they look so similar. I don't know. I don't know why you think that. Uh, yeah, I'm not wearing a hat on mine. So. <laughs> My take on things. Um, I should mention after the brilliant Danielson uh, swerve interaction, yes, uh, Danielson was walking backstage. Renee Paquette tries to chat to him, and there's Jeff Jarrett and all the wacky bunch. Hey, that's how you go all in. Danielson's like, get away from me. Let's have a bare knuckle fight next week then. I can't, I can't wait. Yeah. So dream, dream match. So happy dream for you. Um, speaking of dream matches, uh, next up, there was a, a, a six man. It was the conglomeration, Mark Briscoe, Orange Cassidy, and Tomohiro Ishii, Roderick Strong, Roosh, and, oh, my uh, printer's run out of ink. Uh, yeah. it's, it's a, is it a 3D printer, is it? Because it's a laptop. I think, uh, I think my cursor's just over the, the sick name, so I can't read it. The Beast Mortos. I don't know. It's, it's Ava's assistant, so just the Beast Mortos. <laughs> um... <laughs> Already knew this was going to be great the moment they all brawled and then Orange Cassidy uses his jacket as a cape for the Beast Mortos. That's what I'm saying. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, Taz Gunner, Tito Santana Jones. Uh, spinning DDT for Cassidy and Mortos just spears the shit out of him to take over. <laughs> yeah, come on, Beast Mortos. He's best. Uh, Ishii hit a brain buster on him, though. Uh, and then it's Ishii and Roosh. Uh, they both try and hit each, each other with shoulder tackles and neither of them basically can knock, knock the other one down. Uh, but Ishii gets the best of it and uh, he gets sent outside eventually and then in comes Mark Briscoe to trade with Roosh. Um, Roosh plays the crowd too much, gets sent outside. Briscoe wanted to dive but Strong hit him with a pump knee. Um, battle back with a blockbuster off the apron to the floor. There was a chair that had been set up and uh, Briscoe launched off to that, off of that, off the apron, onto Mortos and Rush as we went to break. When we come back, Cassidy's in trouble, fights him off, stun dog millionaire on Mortos, uh, dive for a Mark Briscoe hot tag. He fires up Ishii, makes a blind tag, and uh, just eats Strong's forearms, uh, hits everyone with German suplexes. Strong spins out of a pile driver, but Cassidy appeared with a spinning DDT. Br uh, Briscoe hit Froggy Bow and Ishii hit the sliding D, but Mortos and Rush broke up the count. 
the Beast uh, wipes out Mark Briscoe with a dive, catches a dive in Cassidy, and uh, Roosh hits a plancher onto the whole pile. Strong hit angle slam on Ishii, Tiger Driver to follow. Uh, Ishii, though, spins out of end of heartache with a headbutt, and Briscoe and the Beast come in. War toss. Uh, loads of big moves. Just think of the Death Rebel theme again. I'm the Beast Mortos. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you said, watch out. <laughs> yes, <right. laughs> uh, Rouge cut off a J driller. Uh, Mortos hit his spinning sit out reverse pile driver, his finisher. He got the one, two, three on Mark Briscoe. I like full disclosure. I'm not saying that I like this match more than Blood and Guts, but I watched Blood and Guts. <laughs> la- I, no, watched I, get Blood it. I watched Blood and Guts last week and I was really enjoying it, but I didn't. I was just like that. Or maybe I went, oh, bloody hell for some of them. When he hit his finish, and he went, one, two, three, this morning, I just genuinely went, yes, like that. <laughs> so I was so happy. It was almost like uh, that, you know, there's a, there's a talk about that great legendary night when Bruno Sammartino <laughs> drops the title, and people thought they their eardrums had failed them mm-hmm. because it was just so silent. that just generally felt like they never heard uh, an absence of sound like it. That, that, that's how surreal it was for so the Beast Mortos to get a win on TV. You'd like to think, you know what, he's buddy earned it. He's got really, really over... Is going to ring him on a title shot? Potentially. Feels route one to yeah, yeah, Someone absolutely. should have pitched him as a, as a, as a monster challenging for a title. Yeah, know, absolutely. So. Absolutely. <laughs> Campaign of strap up the Beast Mortos. We've, absolutely. We've been banging that gavel for a long time. So I was happy to see him get a win on TV. It. Get a win on TV. <laughs> um, you just, it, it's just come in. The Beast has just come in. Kicked ass. Impressed everyone. Unbelievable look. Made, uh, give you like an unhinge your jaw sort of run and he's it, the beast has earned it. Can I shock and sadden you? Oh. I expected a, quite a bit more from this. I don't know if it was just the noise wasn't there. Maybe, yeah. I don't know, it just didn't descend into that like sort of that insane maelstrom of trio's action. Like it was, some of it was excellent. Like Mark Briscoe was incredible in this match. But for a while, it was like they seemed to pair off and a lot singles match, singles combination, singles combination, yeah. singles combination, singles combination, bit of tri- trios stuff at the end and then the finish. It wasn't as good as the other conglomeration trios. I think this was the weakest of the bunch, actually. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, but it was the right result, an unexpected result, a welcome shock. I just, for the last time on this podcast, maybe wanted a little bit more from the match. When you see the graphic... <laughs> bang into it, <laughs> bang into it. Um, but I just, I just thought it could. Have, I just maybe my expectations were too high. Maybe the noise and the arm and the atmosphere wasn't right. But I just expected a bit more. Yeah, and I should mention um, we are launching. Am I right on that? Do you think this is the worst conglomeration? Yeah, but high bar though. Yeah, um, like an insane bar. Me and Sid have been chatting, and we've decided we're going to launch a Ring of Honor podcast uh, just r- randomly. Uh, <laughs> we've got time, and uh, but Ring, we will, Ring we'll of more to us. We will be keeping an eye on this, and we're obviously going to watch when that match. Of course, is the best. If I imagine this, I dream this. Is there another Beast Mortos match on Collision, like a multi-man? Yes, they yeah, yeah, yeah. Multi-man yeah. tag, haven't they? I saw the. Oh my god, it looks unbelievable. Yeah, it is. Hang on. <laughs> uh. Darby Allen, Mark Briscoe, and FTR versus Roderick Strong, Mike Bennett, Matt Taven, and then I've forgotten to written like right the last person in the match. <laughs> and I sent it to Sid. The Beast Mortos. Taven and Bennett being like a bit afraid of him could be a good bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, and you and I get to review it on Monday. Oh yeah, Collision. Unfortunately, we're going to be on hel- on holiday, but that is appointment viewing. You watch that before SummerSlam, aren't you? Probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. One half of the men who's going to be joining Prince Nana and uh, me at Sweet Chin Disco, Max Caster and Anthony Bones and Daddy Ass were backstage. Uh, they're coming to collision. They're looking for FTR in their home territory. Um, and uh, they said that FTR are scared of the blood and guts. Glad to die. Scared of the blood and guts MVPs. Uh, well, they, I don't know much about Saturdays, but a certain man called Elton John told me they were for fighting. I don't know much about this fancy science of this Hadrian Collider, but I know I'm a collider at heart. <laughs> uh, they talk about them saying that the acclaimed aren't serious wrestlers. Um, and they're gonna and uh, 
He Caster says, you're not serious. You didn't show up in your hometown to get your asses kicked by the acclaimed. Um, they're coming to see FTR on Collision on Saturday night. They're still fighting for Collision, aren't they? <laughs> we think to draw attention to as well. Just work on Wednesdays, lads. It's over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, I see a bug's gone, it's over. <laughs> it's like it's the onion it's thing. Just nice <laughs> yeah. little, it's, just a, it's just a nice little bee show. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice little bee show um, in front of a, you know, a, a, it's in a residency now. Mm-hmm. It's, you know... It's net, not where the angles are. It's not where the It's over. It's turn up on dynamite. Kind of if you want, yeah. Like in front of fans that probably would have popped for you based on this. Like I didn't even consider the geography of it, but yeah, Max Caster made a great point there. <laughs> Got a great point. <laughs> Got a great point, Max. Uh, too, too great, if anything. It's really undermine them. <laughs> uh, Bowen says it's time to not up or shut up. So. Yeah, the, I think you I think, I think you're right in terms of what. Well, I hope you're right in terms of what we might be getting it all in with the tag titles. Scalera, Dele, Wade. Yeah, you, it wasn't the Lucha Brothers, it's just the Beast Mortos working. Yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. The tag belts. Get more of them for me. <laughs> um, now time for the sit-down interview with Mariah May. Um, from earlier on in the day, Renee Paquette's sat there, um, and Mariah May simply says, well, what more do I have to explain? It's been very clear since day one. I wanted to be just like Tony Storm. I gained a trust, and then I sliced her open and wore her skin. Um, Baguette quite rightly said Baguette <laughs> Baguette Excuse me uh, What did uh, Tony Storm do to you? And uh, Mariah May said That's almost as bad as Triple H's and WCW that <laughs> like, I beat everybody <laughs> Tony says <laughs> Just Because you know uh, Jean Paul Levesque Jean Paul Levesque uh, You know uh, Stunning Steve Austin is the uh, television champion uh, Aaron Anderson, who's the United States champion, or whichever he was. Uh, what you got to set, set your title on, uh, Mr. Levesque? I beat everybody. <laughs> I am a Frenchman. <laughs> <laughs> like, I am f***ing useless. Sir. <laughs> Came in at WWE and he tried to be like a bit British for a second. Like, hello. Here's the thing. <laughs> I'm the one diamond in this business. <laughs> Uh, hello. Uh, that on our <laughs> thing, yes, I forgot about that. Hello. Uh, <laughs> I am. What the hell sounds like? <laughs> Over here, Regal's like flipping tables. What the f***ing hell's he done? Hello, sir. <laughs> uh, is there, a, is there a, uh, a female bodybuilder around who could make me a little bit interesting? <laughs> I, uh, is there? Because I'm struggling without it. A little new <laughs> legend called Richard Fleer. <laughs> Harley Race, ever heard of him? <laughs> Seriously, where's that? Uh, it's about bloody time that bodybuilder turned up. I'm, uh, I'm drowning out here. Sean, Sean, Kevin Scott, can I travel with you boys? <laughs> I'll drive. <laughs> shotgun. Oh, I'm always shotgun. It's just a laugh I have with the boys. <laughs> <laughs> See, here's the thing. It appears they're going to bury me for several months. But I took that punishment like a man, JR. I took it like a man. It makes me sick to my f- stomach, JR. <laughs> <laughs> That's, and that's British Triple H. <laughs> that is British Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Where are we? Oh, yeah. Uh, what did Tony Storm do to you? Says Renee Paquette. And uh, Mariah May says, nothing. She gave me everything I wanted. Uh, I was told the business would eat me alive. So I guess it was time for me to eat back. She's starving, says <laughs> probably. <laughs> They're all hungry. Uh, and then she says, no more questions. And uh, Renee Paquette, I like the fact that she just said, said no more questions and she didn't leave. She went, yeah. no more questions. And Renee went, fair enough, guess my job's done. Just left. Uh, and then Timeless Tony Storm. Why are you quitting? Timeless Tony Storm <laughs> came out to the stage <laughs> crying. Uh, a lad. <laughs> Mariah May loves me. I loved you. I loved her too. Uh, oh, Jeanette. <laughs> 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 that loves me like I loves you. She been daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, what's she the been one? partner, but then I met a, a girl called Stephanie. <laughs> What's the one thing you kind of cheekily inserted into your promos to kind of get them over the line? The sex. <laughs> uh, she was told to find what you love and let it kill you. Well, at all in, it's going to be the romance of a bloody lifetime. <laughs> and uh, she got the shoe and the world tie on. She storms off. This was 
all kinds of bad. Sorry. Um, Mariah May, way, way better in a live action setting. I mean, matches, yes. Angles. Oh, my God, yes. Promos, live or pre-taped. No, and uh, God dang, and Tony Storm. Like, I don't think I've cringed this much on behalf of Tony Storm than when she did the shiny, shiny promo in NXT UK. Oh. And I know that's harsh, but my God. this There is a irreconcilable gulf between tone of the program, like the tone of the feud that, 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 that they're going for, and the characters involved in it. When these characters try to take it this seriously and articulate it, you could do it in the ring, you could do it in physical interactions. Yeah. And actually, you know what? To be fair, like, Tony Storm was good last week with her. The collision promo, die. the post-match. Yeah. Tired from the match, screaming that she was going to yeah. good, really good. This was like a very, it's like that, there is a fine balance between like how much can you take this seriously given the characters are so heightened and they don't really belong to any of This like just r- sprinted past the line mm. about as quickly as uh, MGF would. <laughs> It's it, it's in, like you're watching this and you're still fighting for this title, aren't you? Well, I was, that angle, I was, I was a bit embarrassed, honestly. That angle's an all timer, and not a lot feels like it's gone as it should have done ever since. And the follow up does matter. It does like the match. They're gonna probably want you to just remember the angle and the match. I'm by ready the time for all of this is done. I'm just, and that's three dynamites away, but I'm just ready for the video package now. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to forget. I don't want to forget how amazing the turn was by the time we get there. Yeah. Uh, we also saw footage of um, sorry, where are my manners? Mercedes Money Money and Britt Baker being separated at Comic Con and uh, Tony Khan making the title match official of course then we got uh, another women's match but this was yeah as we mentioned earlier a very brief one uh, Camille squashing Brittany Jade um, Spun a jade out of the corner by her neck, leaping leg Larry and a dominator basically gets the one, two, three. Uh, Mercedes cuts a promo afterwards, stepping on Jade with her heels as Camille raised her hand. Um, Monet, Monet told the fans to welcome the newest member of the Monet Corp- Corporation, the Brick House Camille. Um, for weeks, she says she's been victimized by Britt Baker, despite trying to be diplomatic. Baker's obsessed with her. Uh, Baker's actions at Comic Con got her suspe- suspended by the EVPs. Uh, Monet says AW is her house now she's going to turn this place into a mansion even losing to me she says will be the greatest thing to happen in Baker's career because Monet is everything and you could do a red piss on Carton <laughs> again not tell, the best tell me how you feel Will <laughs> <laughs> tell you what like Mercedes Money now that they've gone past the awkward it's always that everyone's happy to be here aren't they yeah, and it gets a bit like yeah, 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 just do some character work. Now she is, and I really enjoyed. It. I thought this is the best promo. Yeah, actually, in the live mm. setting, not great, but you know, composed, kind of detestable. It's what you yeah. want. It's what you want. I like the match stuff. I like the back chat she was giving during the match. Yeah, 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 the steps. yeah. That was good. Uh, Camille, like very raw, but like very believable. As I mean, you can move like that and look like that. Yeah, great. Um, but yeah, it wasn't a home run segment really. But the crowd, was, crowd just. I'm not giving it anything. They bought themselves, however, many weeks they want to buy themselves with a suspension yeah. as well, I suppose. Like, yes. They could be in God, depending on how many weeks they want to keep them apart. I just That's really it. like the fact they've just laid out in front of you. So Mercedes has got someone in her corner. That's it. Main event time, Darby Allen versus Hangman Adam Page. Um, Darby Allen uses his quickness early on. Page gets knocked out to the floor. Darby wants a coffin drop, but Page just caught him and hit a release German suplex. <laughs> Hang on, I'm on the wrong button because I don't need this. Oh my god! Uh, because Darby Allen crawls up the ramp. Page goes after him with a chair. The referee's like, first of all, get back in the ring. Second of all, what are you doing with that chair? Um, but that takes so long that uh, Darby Allen flies in with an over-the-top stunner, climbs the set, coffin drop off the entrance tunnel. That's just take us to a break. Yeah. Oh my god! So they, they couldn't have performed that spot any better either. It was incredible. Uh, when we come back, Paige has got a spinning sleeper on Allen, then he just punts him in the head. Uh, Darby Allen also got sent into the ring steps. Paige set them up, threw Darby Allen at them. Darby Allen vaults over, leaps off, gets caught by Paige, and he power bombs him on the edge of the ring and then hits a fall away slam onto the edge of the steps. 
Oh my god! Just a choice to put those spots next to each other. I know, I know. That that was what stuck out to me more, not just how brutal. And I'm just they... saying, don't forget, it was uh, blood and guts last week. And uh, it's it's the Darby Allen added value or the Darby Allen tax. Like there, you remember stuff like this because I remember we needed both those things back to back. Yeah, on his back. Uh, we go to another break. When we come back, Paige looking to set up the steps again, wanting a fall, another fall away slam. But Darby Allen escapes, sweeps his legs, and as Paige sits up, Darby Allen flies through the ropes and just dives straight into him. That awesome just shot from a bullet, as Sid always says, uh, and it was shot really well. Uh, they get back in. Darby Allen takes his belt off and whips Paige. Code Red gets two. Darby Allen wants another coffin drop, but Paige catches him. Sleeper. Darby Allen rolls into a pin attempt for two. Dobby Allen also tried a book shot. Page almost is a reaction. This takes his head off with a lariat for a great uh, near fall. Uh, Page hit a power bomb, hit a dead eye, held on, hit another. One of the book shot. Also, the commentators were putting over the look in Hangman Page. They shot it really well of just like, he's not all right, is he, that bloke? Um, yeah, sets up for the book shot, but Darby Allen collapses. So Page goes to lift him up. Darby Allen cradles him for a flash. One, two, three. Hangman Page furious. Chucks chairs into the ring. Darby Allen's on the ramp, flipping off a page to end dynamite. This was right. You know when we did the Forbidden Door review? Yeah. And I talked about Danielson Shingo. And I was talking about how Danielson's more understated version of I'm banged up and it's alarming selling where he couldn't use, he didn't have much strength in his arm. I thought it was so much more effective, understated, and believable mm. than his, like, seizure selling, basically, or his fencing. Um, I described that match as, it didn't really set my soul on fire outside of a few moments, but I thought it was really cleverly crafted and put together. That, I had that exact same feeling, or almost lack thereof, watching this. Mm. Like, I love the finish and the result. Bold, clean. This is what you should be doing on Dynamite more often. Not every week, but more often. And again, like, for all the chat we've said or had in like in the past this is a genuine improvement AEW has made yeah and um, this year and thank you for that because it's elevated my enjoyment and investment i love the idea people are like understandably some people anywhere are like oh, why is hangman page losing so much already now that he's turned heel and it's because he's not meant to be this person it doesn't suit him yeah. he's inherently a at his core a very good guy and it's only, right, when he realizes that himself will he start to go on and win. I truly believe that as a character choice. And you're meant to still think, even though he's kind of phenomenal as a heel. He's good. That he's a better man than that. And it's going to come through in his wrestling and his sort of behavior and his conduct. I genuinely believe that's why he's kind of like losing. Mm -hmm. um, more often than he's winning, in fact, mm -hmm. since his return. So I love that character arc for a long time. I mean, that spot off the, that coffin drop off the thing was incredible. And this was a pretty disturbing, like unsettling match for a long time in a way that they weren't going for the fireworks or the pops. They almost wanted that eerie disquiet. And I'd like to have seen it play out on an otherwise really hot show for the full dramatic effect because I think it was too easily conflated with how the crowd just don't care and they think the pacing's a bit boring. To an extent, I was with them as it went on. Um, as soon as it started, it was like, Darby Allen got the shine, and then the heat, and then, oh, the heat, then the heat, the heat, the heat. It was pretty much 80-20 in terms of ratio, and the longer it went on, I was, I, and I'm not just saying this to be right, I know I can be a dick about it sometimes, but I don't watch wrestling to be right. I would like to be wrong more often than not, as long as I'm <laughs> getting worked. Genuinely, believe that or not. The longer it went on, I was like, flash roll up here. Flash roll up. Like, you just knew. Yeah. It was so, I think they were, went a bit on the nose with the story. I don't know if it was politics or what, or if it was a genuinely fictional ambition of the match to make it seem like Hangman Page has got all of these tools, but with his mind completely out of balance, he can't put it together until he starts to just be Hangman Page again, you know? I just thought they signposted the, the result, and it was evident in the last however many minutes. Yeah, I get that. I, it wasn't so much the roll-up, but I just, you could sense Darby Allen was winning, and that's fine, but it did then... It should it, be. Yeah, that's it. It should it. be. Number one, like number two contender. Yeah. 
I watched this feeling like they were thinking of um, another match in the future. Okay. Not a bad thing. You know, like no. plenty. It's not as if they held back here. <laughs> To have this kind it's of match, that's frightening though. I'm to have this kind of match and think they're holding on to stuff is a huge compliment to them based on what this was. But because it did to me feel like they were holding on to stuff for another day, it does kind of then affect your enjoyment of this one. And it, but it's long term thought and it's a, a very sort of uh, it's the opposite to what wrestling typically does. It's not such a tunnel visioned approach to your careers and your wrestlers and your stories because. There's nothing for them right now, but it's, you, they're never going to be too far away from each other if they're both fine for the title or they're both in top-line AW programs. So this was good, but yes, I would say the graphic probably had most people. You saw it a lot, didn't you? The, the vibe around this match was, Christ. TV match of the air contender. Yeah, and old Wednesdays are back. And I wouldn't say this quite lived up to those expectations. I didn't have a bad time with it, though. No. And I do love this Hangman Page character. It doesn't bother me that he's winning or losing in the slightest the character work he's doing in the matches is everything for this gimmick. And I liked as well that they resisted the urge, to the point about the clean finishes, I like the fact they resisted the urge to involve the elite, just because we think we know that it's going to be Paige and Okada, and obviously Darby's got the Jack Perry stuff. You don't need to... Oh, look, he hit him with this on the night. What happens if he hits him? You know, we yeah. take the piss out of it for a reason, don't we? That you don't need it every single time, every single week. Great end of the show. Um... And uh, yeah, very excited to see where we go from here and the road to all in. What we three you dynamites away? You said I don't know. I'm not telling them. They don't know why I'm useless for stuff like this. Yeah, three more dynamites. Feels right, yeah. Wow, it's coming around fast. Uh, but let us know your thoughts on AEW Dynamite in the comment section below or on X at What Culture WWE. Watch there. You can follow all three of us. You can follow Michael Hamfler at Michael Hamfler. Follow Michael Sidgwick at. M. Sidgwick. Follow me at Adam Wilborn. Follow us all at What Culture WWE. As I say, as I said, follow our brilliant producer. As I say, as I say, at yeah, it's yeah. Adam Nicholas uh, and subscribe to What Culture Wrestling wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts. WhatCulture.com forward slash tickets for our live show. But for now, this has been the Dynamite Review. My thanks to Hamlet Sidgwick. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you soon.